Have you ever watched somebody build a million dollar brand, a multi million dollar brand, a seven figure brand, an eight figure brand, a nine figure brand, a 10 figure brand? Have you ever watched somebody like build something that's just so ginormous and it seems like, wait, it seems so effortless? From the outside looking in, you're watching them and it looks effortless. Well, that's probably because they've got a lot of leverage. And I'm going to talk to you in this video on how to build an eight figure brand. And it's something that we've been able to do by the grace of God, but it's something that you can do as well. But the first thing you've got to do is you've got to allow yourself to be okay with the idea that it's okay for you. And then you have to get to the place in your life where you allow yourself to believe that you can do it. So as we're talking about a billion dollar, eight figure brand, that's $10 million brand, 10 million, 20 million, 99 million, anywhere between 10 and $100 million is an eight figure brand. Well, before we talk about how to build an eight-figure brand, let's talk about what a brand is. And if you watch my videos for any length of time, you know that I believe that a brand is a name that reminds you of a story, okay, that you'd like to see yourself in. I'm, I'm going to break all of this down like to the nth degree. A brand is a name that reminds you of a story that you'd like to see yourself in. A premium brand is, in fact, a, a brand is a name that reminds you of a story that oftentimes, like a desirable brand, a brand that's appealing to you is going to be a brand, a name that reminds you of a story that you'd be willing to pay to see yourself in. A premium brand is a name that reminds you of a story that you'd be willing to pay a lot of money to see yourself in. And, and what is it about premium brands that cause us to desire to pay a lot of money to attach somebody else's name, because a brand is a name, to our name or our Persona, our beingness. Why do I want to attach somebody else's name to my name? Well, um, we're going to get into that. So your name, when I say it's a name that reminds you of a story, the name is more of a stage name. Now, a real name can become a stage name, right? But it's a name. Like, my name is Myron Golden, right? So that's my name. The name of my company is Skillionaire. What Skillionaire, what does that mean? Well, you have to develop the skills in order to become a millionaire. That's the implication of the name Skillionaire. Okay, you are tracking. So you think about names and what they mean. Some people want the, like some people who build businesses, they want the brand to be their name. Ferrari is named after Ferrari. A guy named Ferrari. Mercedes is named after a guy named Mercedes. McDonald's is named after two brothers named McDonald. The McDonald brothers, right? So, so a brand is a name. Rolls-Royce is named after a dude named, whose last name was Rolls and another dude whose last name was Royce, right? So you think about a brand and then you think about a premium brand. Well, the brand is the stage name. And the stage name has a story behind it. And the story is the reputation of the brand. So when you think of a brand name, you think of a story. I don't know what story you think of. When, and you can, for those of you who are going to be watching this on YouTube, you can type it in the chat. Like, what is, when you think of a brand, a particular brand, when you think of Nike, what do you think of? Right? And most people think of, like, the best athletes. Why? Because Nike was brilliant in getting the best athletes and recruiting them to wear the swoosh, right? So the swoosh becomes like, okay, so when we talk about the name, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go right on the board. When we talk about the name. What is the name? The name, and I'm going to call it the stage name because nobody's name is Nike. Well, somebody's name was Nike. It was the Greek god of victory. That's what Nike means, is the Greek god of victory, right? So stage name, what is your stage name? It's the identity of the brand, right? Now, it's really identity. It's really interesting to me that businesses realize that one of the most valuable, one of the most important things they can do is to establish an identity. And the identity of Nike is, well, we make the best athletes, but they don't make the best athletes. Like the best athletes, we like Michael Jordan, like Air Jordan's a Nike brand. Tiger Woods, a Nike brand, right? They would go recruit the best athletes and they would recruit them early before they became a name. And then as that athlete's 
fame elevated, so did the brand that the, that, that athlete represented. Are y'all tracking? Does that make sense? So, so they understood that it was identity. But see, this is a biblical concept. When, when God said to Moses, go tell Pharaoh, I said, let my people go. Moses asked a very important question, which didn't make sense to me. I read this first time when I was a teenager. I'm like, why is he asking that question? Who shall I say has sent me? What kind of question is that? What kind of question is that? Who shall I say has sent me? Like, and I, I jokingly say that, like, when I first read that, I wanted to coach Moses and say, bro, what are you doing? That's not a good question. Like, I would have wanted to ask the question. Here's what I would ask. What can I tell Pharaoh you said you're going to do if he say no? See that's, a, see, that's a question that made sense to me, but Moses didn't have to go there because he knew the answer to that was all wrapped up in, in who shall I say has sent me, Right? Because who sent you has more, has more weight than what he's going to do if you say no, right? Like, when does a private have more authority than a, than a lieutenant? Well, when he's on orders from a general, right? So the identity is the thing that carries the weight. It carries the authority. So the stage name. And so that identity is going to be represented by the stage name, um, which, which it's also going to be represented by a logo, generally, right? So you're going to have a logo. And all of that is to make the name easily recognizable, right? So the name's recognizable. Cool. And it's like, <laughs> my daughter got me a Louis Vuitton belt. Don't, don't tell anybody. And when she got me this Louis Vuitton belt, I thought she got it for me because it had an L and a V. And I thought it was a Roman numeral and she knows I like math. So I didn't even know it was, a, I didn't, I'd never seen a Louis Vuitton logo <laughs> I had no idea what it was, right? I was like, oh, that's a cool belt. Um, anyway, so, so, but it's a logo. So it's gonna have, they're gonna have, you're gonna have a logo and that logo is gonna represent your brand. Now, the question you've got to ask yourself intentionally in the beginning of building your million dollar brand is, what do I want my brand story to be? Because this is the brand identity. The stage name is the brand's identity, but then you need a story. Huh, what's the story about your brand going to be? And by the way, somebody have to, has to craft your story. And if you don't do it and you leave it up to chance, I promise you, whoever establishes the story of your brand does not have your best interest in mind. Like, what's the story of my brand? Well, we help people have six and seven figure days faster than other coaches help people have six and seven figure years. That's what we're known for. Right. That's why we have people filling out applications every week to be in my fifty five thousand dollar coaching program. Why? Because we coach people who win. I've helped. I've got one client, for instance. Um, he was in he's been in our he, he was he was a, he was a speaker for 18 years before he ever hired us to be his coach. His best year was like three hundred and sixty thousand in 18 years. He comes into our coaching program. And in four months, doing what we showed him how to do, he has his first million dollar day. Right? So, story brand. Okay, so what's the story? The story, so this, your name, it, it, it has, it's your identity. Your story, it's, it's the narrative. It's the narrative, and it is your legend. What is the legend of your brand? It's like the story that it's the story that goes out in front of you and makes room for you. What is the legend of your brand? And what, if, if you're going to build an eight-figure business, your brand better have some leverage. And the story has to be a story that other people wish was their story, right? So when you like you tell us the the name, this is what we do. It, the story has to be legendary. I remember. When I got started in a multi-level marketing company back in 2009, after my business had started tanking, and there was this woman, I think she was like 27. She was making 200000 a month. She came to my house, did a presentation for me, and she had only been in the company for less than a year. I'm like, this is a crazy story. So you know what I did? I borrowed her story to build my story. And so by borrowing her story to build my story, I told her, look, this, this thing is so doable, right, that there's a 27-year-old girl, woman, 
27, I'm old, so 27 is a girl. Okay, there's a 27 year old woman who's in eight months is making 200,000 a month. And my question would always be this, how would you like her story to be your story? Right, That's what, that was my closing question. How would you like her story to be your story, right? I, I just told you a story about a speaker. He's been a speaker for 18 years, and then he, he never had a, he, the most he ever made in a year was $360,000, and then he joins our coaching program, what happens? He has a million dollar day inside four months. I could say, how would you like that story to be your story, right? You see what I'm doing? Uh, so it's stories. People can remember stories. People can relate to stories. People can resonate with stories, right? And so, so you, got a, you, got, you got a stage name, you've got a story, and then the story, the stage name, the story has to increase status. That's the thing. If the, if the, if the story that represents the name elevates their status, they're in. But if the story that represents their name doesn't, rep- doesn't elevate their status, they're out. For instance, if I said to you, you got a call, let me see, who am I going to use? You got a call from Damon John from Shark Tank. His office called. I'm going to coach 12 entrepreneurs this year to becoming billionaires. And we're considering you to be one of those entrepreneurs. How many of y'all want to be in? How many of y'all? Who wants to be a, right. Now, nobody said, how much does it cost? Where do I have to go? What do I have to do? What do I have to give up? How many hours a day? Nobody asking any of those questions, right? Why? Because Damon John's story brand, his legend is He's a shark on Shark Tank. He's helped businesses succeed. So you believe that attaching your brand to his brand will elevate your status. Does that make sense? So the question becomes, what can you do in your brand to show people that by attaching their legacy to your legend, it elevates their status? Because people, here's what people want to do, whether you know it or not. They want to use your status. They want to use your brand. They want to use your brand as the foundation for their brand. That's what they want to do. That's why when people are talking to you about what they've done in the past, they always give you brands that are easily recognizable that they've done it for. That's why people name drop. People name drop because they're using somebody else's name to elevate the status of their name because that's why people take pictures, take pictures with celebrities and post them on their social media. Because this person's brand is elevating my brand. Are y'all tracking? Is what I'm saying making sense? So the question I have to ask, what can you, what, like the, the name, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter what the name is. I mean, it helps if the name has something that it pictures, right? Like if, if you've got a name that represents something, like people say to me all the time, man, you have the perfect name, Myron Golden. Right. Right. So but and, and I, I didn't have anything to do with that. <laughs> I, I was just blessed into it when I was born into it. Um, people ask me sometimes, is that your real name? Yeah. It, I mean, granted, I'm just telling like if I would if I was going to do a stage name, I'd choose Golden, but I wouldn't have chosen Myron. I mean, I'm glad I have it now, but I wasn't so happy about it when I was a kid. Right. So 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 when people hear your name, what is the story? What is the story that you want to be known for? And I'm going to tell you the best way to make your story legendary. And it's, it's really a simple biblical principle. He who will be greatest among you, let him be servant of all. The only way to elevate your brand story is by doing things to serve people other than yourself. You got to serve somebody other than yourself. You have to serve them in a way that gets them a result that a multitude of people would like to have. I think about Russell Brunson, man, and how he built ClickFunnels, and it's a multi, uh, it's a nine-figure business. It could, it might even be a 10-figure business. It's probably got a 10-figure valuation. And he built, he took a software company and with zero venture capital funds and scaled it to over $100 million in revenue a year. How do, you, how do you do that? Well, here's what he did. He got four case studies, four. Natasha Hazlett, Liz Benny, Drew Canoli, and one other one that escapes me right now. And he went to their offices and he built funnels for them for free. And their business blew up. 
And he documented the blowing up of their business. Not, not like a bomb blow up, but like the numbers, they, the profits exploded. Like Organifi was about to go out of business. And it blew up. It, I mean, it became eight, maybe even a, maybe a nine-figure business because Russell went out and built a funnel for him, and they just went around and told their stories. He built his brand, his story, on the back of the people he served. Not, not, on their, not on their back, but on the back of how he served the people that he helped. Like, if, you don't, if, you don't have a, if, you, if your brand doesn't have, have a story, you haven't helped enough people do enough things that are significant enough for people to care. I mean, it's so simple. Whatever it is. Like, um, I had a guy here who was here for the challenge. His name was Jabez. He was here for the challenge a couple weeks ago. He lost over 100 pounds. He did a couple YouTube videos and his channel blew up. Like, over, with some shorts, over 300,000 subscribers in 30 days. Like, you need a story that is, like, unparalleled of some kind for whatever niche you're in. And so, if you can make, if, if you're, and, and, and if you can make your story elevate people's hope of elevating their status, if it infuses hope in them for elevating their status, people will buy your brand. And the bigger the payoff of, from the story, the more people are willing to pay so they can elevate their status with your brand. They'll pay a lot of money. It could be, and it doesn't matter if it's fitness, it doesn't matter if it's finance, it doesn't matter if it's relationships, it doesn't matter. If you, I know a guy, I know a guy who built a multi-million dollar business teaching biblical principles of health. He wrote a book called Why Christians Get Sick. And then he wrote another book called God's Ultimate Plan for Health, I think was the name of his other book. Then, as if that by itself wasn't enough, then he created this thing called the Hallelujah Diet. Then, he started certifying people as certified biblical health ministers. And he would charge them for the certification. And people started getting all these results because he was just teaching them, hey, go eat the stuff God told you to eat and stop eating the stuff he told you not to eat. And people got healthy. Imagine that. And so as a result of that, he built a multi, multi, multi-million dollar business on a couple of different levels. He built a multi-million dollar information marketing business and a multi, multi-million dollar multi-level marketing business. You know why he built a multi-million dollar multi-level marketing business? Because he didn't lead with a multi-level marketing product. He led with his own brand and then he made his multi-level marketing company his supplier, his vendor, not the forward-facingness of his business. And, and so anybody like anybody can build a successful brand if they figure out something that helps people in a big way. And when they help people in a big way, whatever that help is, a whole bunch of people want it. Like that's the secret. That's the secret sauce to building a brand. And then people will be looking to pay lots and lots of money to add your brand to their name so they can elevate their status and create a new story that other people will pay to be a part of. That's how you build an eight-figure brand. What are the components? The components are a stage name, a name, a name that can be represented with a logo, a story that has legend and status that creates legacy, and boom, congratulations, your brand. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully that helps you too. See you in the next video.